everyone really felt a solidarity within the campus community, and I think that was very special. I would have to say I was extraordinarily excited to be involved and to know that we were actually going to be in the same room with him. It was a very exciting thing. By the time the Pope got here, there was a, a huge public interest, and so of course there was a tremendous amount of interest on campus. I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred different volunteers who were there. And some of them were lucky to be inside. Others were out helping park cars or direct traffic. But they all did it with a spirit of this is for our faith, our university, for the Holy Father. And it really brought us all together. There was enormous anticipation, excitement, and pride that the Holy Father, and, and especially, I think, John Paul II was coming because he was a very special person. He was a people person, and you sensed that immediately. The campus was electric for this whole visit of uh, John Paul II. He was such a charismatic figure. And the fact that he was a young man, and you think of John Paul II in the 70s, he was skiing in the Alps, he was traveling the world. The world was a whole different place then, so he could get out of a car in a motorcade and go up and greet people. So we had this great expectation and hope that that's what would happen on our campus. We were probably, uh, I'd say, 25 feet back from where the, the Pope's car passed by. Um, it was a gorgeous day, late September, blue sky. The Basilica had put a very large banner all the way down the uh, front uh, side of the Knight's Tower of the Basilica with what somebody told me was the papal motto. There are probably a number of papal mottos, but it was uh, a kind of a powder blue banner, the width of the Knight's Tower, and, and probably 150 or 200 feet long, uh, with white lettering that said, Totus to us, which translates roughly to, it's all yours. Um, <clears throat> very welcoming to the, the Pope. My memory is we could hear the chanting of the students which had lined that that short route from the Basilica to, to the location on campus. Perhaps I love you more. Uh, we could hear the chanting of John Paul II, we love you, which of course became, you know, the, the cry, if you will, during his, really, his entire uh, reign as pontiff. And there were just hundreds and hundreds of university students on the steps of the Basilica waiting to see the Pope, and huge cheers, and he was a very uh, dynamic uh, person in public, uh, and, and he kind of waded into the crowd. And if you look back at some of the other pictures of our students at that time, uh, students who were uh, seniors or juniors or whatever, standing on the steps of the shrine when he went into the shrine, and they, they were all around him. Amen. And now, and now, with your permission, I enter. That whole area. As I recollect it, that whole area in front of the basilica was just all people. And of course, there were uh, police and, and other kinds of emergency vehicles everywhere. And then he got in a car, I guess, which I, I'm thinking was uh, just sort of the kind of car that a, a politician would ride in. I, I think uh, it was just a, uh, like a, a Cadillac limousine or something, but whatever it was, it was an open car. Uh, and he came out the entrance uh, of the front of the shrine onto Michigan Avenue, turned east, uh, and proceeded slowly down Michigan Avenue to the 7th Street entrance of the university, 
and then turned in to go speak at the uh, what was then the gym, now the architecture school. And I had the great privilege of working inside the Crow Center, which was the old gym at the time, which had been transformed into this beautiful arena for the Pope to be there. And I had the opportunity to sit up, to stand actually up front, and to direct some of the dignitaries to their seats. Similar to this visit of uh, Pope Benedict, when John Paul II came, he addressed educators, and we had Catholic school presidents, college presidents, as we will uh, this year, uh, come to campus to learn about uh, the Pope's feelings about education. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Father's in the room. And we are actually in that presence, and there is a sense of knowing that this is a very special presence. I mean, that, that feeling was, was very, very much evident to all in the room. And of course, I had students that were Catholic, non-Catholic, Jewish. Uh, it was the same experience for all of them. It was just a tremendous sense that overcame all of us that we were under the same roof as the Holy Father, who had come to visit us. It's very special. I want to say there were somewhere around 2,000 participants. It was a much larger venue than we're able to uh, have this year. Uh, because it was an athletic facility, there were bleachers up, one, up the back side of the Crow Center. So people were seated in those bleachers. I recall students being there, and uh, that was a lot of fun having, that was just sort of like a, an overflow crowd. People could come in the peanut gallery. That was way down at the end. So they had a, quite a distance to see the Holy Father. But I think there were another maybe tw 2,000 seats in there for people. We carpeted the old gym. I mean, I couldn't, you wouldn't believe when you saw it on TV, you just thought, holy smokes, what an auditorium they have there at Catholic University. You could not tell. It was the old gym. Um, and after the Pope left, we took the carpet, and for literally for decades, that carpet was used in different offices ar around campus as people needed to get new carpeting. Somebody would say, well, you know, we still have some of the carpet in the warehouse from when the Pope was here. Because the world was so different, and because you had the opportunity to really be up close and personal, he came down the aisle of the Crow Center, and from side to side he just shook people's hands and there was there wasn't this big entourage of security that engulfed him what an experience that was for the students and I, and I remember our chorus director then Dr. Michael Cordovana had said to the students during all of the rehearsal process when you are performing don't take your eyes off of Dr. Ricks who was the conductor of the orchestra do not look at the Holy Father, look at the conductor. And when the Holy Father stopped exiting uh, the, the room, we were performing, and in a stage whisper, we all heard Dr. Cordovana say, look at the Pope, thereby allowing the students to move their eyes from Rick's down to the Holy Father. It was a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. I think people say that Benedict's going to be a little bit more reserved, but when I've watched him on other visits to other countries, he's not as reserved as people think uh, he's going to be. I think he's going to have a good time coming to the United States and being greeted by all the welcoming crowds be a part of this momentous occasion uh, and cheer him on as he comes onto our campus. You know, th this is our home, our campus, and uh, it's just extremely special, and it's an incredibly special moment for the university. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be in the spotlight that briefly, but we'll be in the spotlight worldwide, uh, and, and it's, um, it's just a, a kind of a once-in-a-lifetime moment.